It is okay to be rich. It is not some kind of spiritual deficit when you have money. I want you to believe in you when no one else believes in you. I want you to know that you can do it when nobody else believes you can do it. I want you to believe that you can do it when you might be struggling and believing it yourself. Welcome. Man, this is exciting to see so many amazing faces. Regina, nice to see you. Who else do we have in the room? Michelle. Man, so many of you already have your cameras on. I like it, but there's a few of you all that don't. So let's get those cameras on. All right. Who else do we have here? Um, Truly, what's up? Vera, Kelly, Adrian. Nice to see you, everybody. Nice to see you. My name is Michael. I am not Marvin, but I'm here to help you guys get ready for the Business Growth Masterclass. We need a bunch of engagement tonight. We need you all to tap in. So Tierra, Steven, Mark, Kimberly, we need your guys' energy here. Drop a one in the chat if you're ready to experience new levels of success going into 2024. I got to know right now, who's ready for new growth and new ah, new mindset shifts going into this new year? Because that's what we're going to bring you guys tonight. That's what we're going to bring you right here in the Business Growth Masterclass. We have... <laughs> an evening that is going to change your life and your business. But there's a few things we need you all to do to make this the most successful event yet. Number one, have your camera on like I just mentioned. There's a few of all that don't. I get it. You may be traveling. You may be at work listening in. But if at all possible, we would love to see your face. Why? Because we want to engage with you. We want to build connections and relationships with you and personally help your business. And Marvin's known for pulling people up on stage. And so he only pulls people up who have their cameras on. So number Michael, two, Michael, make sure that people know before this, a little bonus thing. Uh, this is a free event today. Uh, so um, uh, I, won't, I want to challenge everyone. That you got the link. Obviously, you came into the webinar with this link. Send this out to three of your friends. Text this out to three of your friends now so that they can hop on this and get this information. It could be some life-changing information. So make sure that you take this link, share it with at least three of your friends who you believe are entrepreneurial-minded, who are growth-minded, investment-minded, and, uh, and share this information. And let's get this let's get this over 100 people. Let's go, let's go. And so, yeah, thanks, Marvin. Thanks for the reminder. Number two, just go ahead and grab a pen and paper after you go and invite those three people. Does everybody have a pen and paper at hand? I want to make sure I'm seeing it. Hold it up to the screen. If you have a pen and paper where you could take some notes. All right. I see a few, few of you all do. Love it. Listen, last training we did like this, we had people showing us two to three full pages of notes. So you want to make sure you have that as well. Number three, create a growth environment. Guys, listen, we want you to free yourself of all distractions. Turn off any music. Turn off the TV. Go tell the kids, hey, go watch Blippi for a little bit. You know, it's it's your time to hone in on your business because this hour together, just one gem, and I say this all the time, one gem can make you millions of dollars in your business if you write it down, if you really take it in. But one gem that you miss out on because you're distracted could make you lose thousands of dollars, right? It's called opportunity cost. And so guys, tonight, just lock in. Let's make this the best event ever. This is the perfect time, the perfect time to learn all the necessities and the foundations for growing your business. We're getting into the new year. So let's make this doable. So listen, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna intro the man of the hour. You already see him on the screen, but Marvin Mitchell, this guy is not only an entrepreneur that has made seven and eight figures in his business, this guy, is a go giver. He's going to come tonight and he's prepared a presentation for you that we truly believe could 10x your business in the next six to 12 months. Who wants 10x in their business right now? Put me in the chat if you want 10x in your business in the next six to 12 months. I got to see it. Seven says me. I want to see Elisa says me. Dondrika says me. Kiera, Vera, Keisha, love it, love it, love it. Listen, that's what we're providing. And Marvin, a lot of you all know him from social media or for podcasts, or maybe you just got an ad somewhere. This guy is a go-giver and he loves to pour out to people and he has the credentials. So I'm not going to sit here and, and 
lay out his entire bio because I would do him, I would do him bad because he's so good at his craft. He's so good at honing in businesses. So Marvin, I'm going to turn this over to you. Let's change some lives tonight and let's get this going. All right. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Uh, great, great to be in front of you today. And, um, and look, um, here's the deal. Why did I want to do this free webinar? Um, I know we're headed into a new year and people are looking to make some brand new moves and I got to help you to make those moves. So two things that I want to really help you with is I want to help you with your finances. I want to help you to grow your money and I want to help you to manage and multiply that money. Um, but I also want you to grow your freedom. I want you to, to, to regain your time back. I want you to have more fun in life. I want you to know that you don't have to work harder in order to make something happen. You just got to work smarter. We just got to know what type of smart things that that, that that is. And we also want to help you to protect your legacy. So today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to really get into the topic of life insurance. And we're going to get into the topic of um, trust, making sure that you protect your estate. And we're also going to get into the topic of your business. Like what can you do to protect your business? What can you do to grow your business, scale your business? And as I always like to say that if you... If you have a business and you can't take a 30-day vacation from your business, then you really don't have a business, okay? Um, if you feel that you have to perform in order for your, um, for your business to grow, then you don't have a business. Believe me, I was able to generate in the last seven weeks over $4 million of revenue in my financial firm. Four million, and when I say four million, I'm not saying four million dollars of assets. I'm talking about four million dollars of revenue. But here's the fun part about that: I've been in the last seven weeks. I've stayed in Miami. I've stayed in Orlando. I've been to Dubai for nine days. I've I've traveled to. I've been in Atlanta. I'm in St. Louis right now. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with my family. I've done a lot of a lot of different things. I haven't spent nearly as much time in the business. So why has my business been able to have record weeks and I'm not even involved in the day to day? It's because I took the time to to do the secrets that I'm going to reveal to you today. I took the time to build my operations, to build my my operating system, to build the systems, to build the structures, to build the team to put the right team in the right seats, in the right place. Um, I took the time to start my, my policies to prepare for all the wealth that was to come. I took the time to buy investments. I bought investments in Dubai. I bought investments in Ohio um, over the past seven weeks. I've invested in a brand new life insurance policy. So I don't say all, I don't say any of that to pump myself up because I don't have to. I am a Hall of Fame financial advisor, 17 years of the game, but I say that to let you know it's possible. At one point, I did not think it was possible, but I had to change my mindset and change the manifestations in my subconscious belief system, in my mind to know that I can achieve anything I put my mind to. And a lot of you are in a particular situation. All of the different opportunities are open to you. They're 100% open, but you haven't accepted the fact that you deserve it. You haven't accepted the fact that you can do anything that you put your mind to. You haven't, you haven't believed it. Therefore, you seem shocked when somebody else can do it and you believe it for someone else, but you don't believe it for yourself. You might say you believe it, but you don't really feel it. You don't really feel that you believe it. And the power of manifestation is more than just saying you believe it, although your words are powerful. It's taking the time to feel that you can do it. Before you achieve anything great in life, you should have already felt it inside of your body and inside of your soul before it ever occurred, because that's really where it occurs. It occurs in your mindset first. And we're going to talk about some of those things as well. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. But if you are ready for me to really get into this and dive into this, let me see you drop some fireballs in the comments today. Drop some fireballs in the comments if you are ready for me to go ahead and give you this free game. And also, do me a favor. As I am doing this presentation today, you all, 
do me a favor and take out your camera and just get little 10 second, 20 second clips of me, tag it on your IG, let people know that they should be here, let people know that they should take advantage of, of these free webinars and these free opportunities when they do get a chance, because this is probably my last one of the year. Uh, so there are people who they need to know at least some clips of what's going on in this particular meeting. So thank you all for all the, all the fireballs. Thank you all for your support. We're almost at 100, you all. So keep sharing this with your friends, sharing this with your family, sharing this with people who, who you believe that are ready to get this wealth building information. But let me start off telling you a little bit about my story, um, because I want you to know that a lot of you are further along than I was. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. In fact, I grew up without a lot of money. I grew up pretty poor. I grew up living in shelters. My dad had been in jail my whole life. My mom had me when I was 15. When she Not I was 15. That would be crazy if she had me when I was 15. My mom had me when she was 15 years old. I was her only child. By the time she was 20, I now had <clears throat> two younger sisters. Unfortunately, my mom was in an abusive relationship. So when she left that relationship, we ended up fleeing and going into shelters for a while. My grandmother really picked us up and, and moved her, moved us and found out where we was in this anonymous shelter, moved us into her little small home. And one of the things my grandmother instilled in me is that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. She used to teach me that not to let my circumstances dictate the outcomes of my life, that anything that I believe I can achieve. Um, and, and I really, really took on those belief systems in fact, I became the first person in my family to graduate from college. I graduated from college at a, at a, in a school in Illinois called SIUE. Uh, once I graduated from college, um, I then moved on to attend law school. While I was in law school, unfortunately, I got news that my grandmother became very sick with cancer, and I decided that I would move, um, and um, I would move back to St. Louis. So I moved back to St. Louis, and while I was in St. Louis, my grandmother made me her durable power of attorney, which means that now I was responsible for looking after her finances. But two things happened. Number one, she told her advisor that she wanted to be safe, that she could not afford to lose her money, that she was afraid to be a burden on the family. The financial advisor told her that she was safe, but totally ignored her request, put her into extremely aggressive investments. She ended up losing half of her money when the stock market crashed. She ended up not having any long-term care insurance. Uh, because she had no long-term care insurance, it depleted the rest of her portfolio, spent down on medical expenses. She ended up passing away, broke, feeling like she was a burden on the family, you all. So again, imagine me, I'm in my early, early 20s, and I'm seeing my grandmother suffer through this. And it really, really put something into my heart and made me realize that I needed to be a generational curse breaker. I could not allow this to happen to myself or anybody else in my family. So I decided that I would go into the financial industry. I began to, I became obsessed with reading books and studying everything about finances. And I actually went into a big Wall Street firm uh, when I was just 21 or 22 years old, uh, somewhere around there. Anyway, I was at that company. I was drinking a Kool-Aid. I got off to a really good start. Um, by the way, a lot of my family said I shouldn't go into the financial industry. They said I should just stay where I was which I worked at Lowe's and Wendy's, you all. This is what I mean. You know how sometimes we say a small, don't let a small mind, uh, introduce your big dreams to a small mind. God bless my family. They were thinking they were doing the right thing for me, but they almost made me miss out on an opportunity for a promotion in tool world at Lowe's where I would go from $12 to $15 an hour, all right? So anyway, fun fact. So anyway, here I am now. Um, in this financial firm, drinking the Kool-Aid until one day, about four or five years into my career, one of my first clients came to me and said, I cannot afford to lose any of my money. I said, what do you mean? Um, she said, I can't afford to lose any of my money. I said, well, the stock market is going to go up and down. It's variable. So you're going to make some money, you're going to lose money. She said, no, I don't think you understand. I don't want to lose anything. So I said, okay, great. So what I did was I Followed my gut and I protected her. I took her out of the stock market because this lady was in her 60s. She could not afford to lose her money. I started having flashbacks of my grandmother. Well, anyway, I got reprimanded for that, you all. The lady happened to be right. 
the stock market crashed. She didn't lose anything, but I still got reprimanded by the company. And I realized at that time that the company was, was doing what was in the best interest for the company, not what's in the best interest for the client. So at that point, I decided that I couldn't do it. My conscience wouldn't let me do it. Although I was making over six figures, although I grew up poor, I said, I, I can't, I can't, I couldn't do it. My family thought that I was crazy again. I decided to leave and start my own company. It was a struggle for a long time. Sometimes I was feeling like the children of Israel are fleeing through the wilderness. And I was like, man, at least I got to eat and got a good paycheck when I was back in Egypt. Now I'm getting doors slammed in my face. But it turned out to be one of the best decisions that I could have ever made, right? Not only was I able to become one of the top financial advisors in the country, I was nominated by the top five by Retirement Advisor Magazine. I've been on TV consistently over the past several years. I've got a radio show that I've been on for the past several years. Um, I've started to get a name for myself on social media, my business. Um, I did an eight-figure year last year for the first time. Um, my business, I wrote four books. Uh, I was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2021. So all of these things have happened because I believe in myself. And here's the deal with you all. I want you to believe in you when no one else believes in you. I want you to know that you can do it when nobody else believes you can do it. I want you to believe that you can do it when you might be struggling and believing it yourself. Because let me tell you something, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the, tr the truth and the lie. I'm going to tell you all the story on how I made my first seven figures. Because what people don't understand, there are some principles that all of us can follow. But if you're ready to learn how I made my first seven figures, I want you to put the number seven in the chat so I can know you're paying attention and that you're with me. By the way, we got 97 people in the room today, you all. Share this with some friends. Let's get this up over 100. 97 people in the room today. That means if you are here, don't leave. You're going to hurt our numbers. Stay around. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this information. A lot of people tell you about seven figures. But a lot of people don't tell you the ups and downs of what they had to go through to get that first seven figures. So I just want to tell you all the story. My path will not be the same as your path, right? We're, we're all going to have different paths, but yet it's good to know somebody's path. So again, here I am now. I left the financial firm and I wasn't doing well. In fact, I remember <laughs> I had just bought a house and my mortgage was like $900 a month. And I remember that I had one month that was so bad that my check, not for the week, not a bi-weekly check, but for the entire month, you all, was $80. $80 for a month. I had no, no, no more money. I had $80. And I remember, I said, what am I going to do with this $80? I had to learn how to pay for my mortgage with a credit card, you all. I didn't even know that was possible. But what I did was I said, you know what? I can't do anything with this $80. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to give God this entire $80. I was like, you're going to have to multiply this $80 like you did the two fish and the five loaves. Like literally. <laughs> because I can't do anything with it. Right? So we got 100 people, y'all. Congratulations for making us be at 100 people. That's amazing. So what I did, you all, uh, was I gave it to the church. Now, this is the, this is the blessing of this story. Remember, $80 I gave to the church. The next day, I'm at a um, symposium for financial advisors in the area. Apparently, my name was put into a drawing, you all. 500 advisors at this symposium. My name gets pulled. I win a $500 gift card. Now, y'all might be thinking it's only $500, but I'm telling you, that, that, that was probably one of the turning points in my life because I knew that the Lord was with me. Because when I was thinking about giving up, when I was thinking about quitting, when I was thinking that I made a mistake leaving my job, when I was thinking about all those things, God put that ram in the bushes just to let me know, no, you are aligned. You are on the right path. What it also taught me is that when I give freely, when I let go of the seed, that the harvest will come. It taught me that whatever I invest in myself and whatever I give and invest will be returned tenfold. I began to have that belief system that, man, I became a giver because I believe that when I gave, it came back to me. So every single time when I made more money, I started a scholarship fund. I started to give $10,000 scholarships to high school 
people who were who were in um who grew up like I did without their fathers around, who grew up like I did with their mom having them at a young age, etc. And I started just giving as I began to manifest, and my and my assets continued to grow. It continued to grow, and I gave out of the abundance of my heart. And and because I gave out of the abundance of my heart, it returned to me tenfold. But a lot of us are too busy holding on to your seed, thinking that your seed is the harvest, right? So that's the first thing. So I'm out knocking on doors and I'm still getting doors slammed in my face. People telling me I don't belong in the neighborhood. I'm dealing with racism. I'm dealing with all this type of stuff. I'm blaming everybody except myself. It's like, it's because I'm too young. They don't like me. It's because I'm black. I'm in this white neighborhood. They don't really care about me. My company don't care about me. I was like, woe is me. I was negative Nancy about everything. I had all of these limiting beliefs and my business would not grow. And then I read this book, you all. Write this down. There was a book outside of the Bible. This is one of my favorite books. There is a book that's called The um, the Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino, The Greatest Salesman in the World. Now, this book has absolutely nothing to do with sales. But what was great about this book, you all, I began to get my character built. One of the things that it taught me is that one of the first scrolls was, I will greet this day with love in my heart. And one of the things that it said was muscle will split a shield and even destroy life. But only the unseen power of love can defend against this force. And who can say no to my to my um, goods when their heart feels my love? Another thing that it would say is, um, but most of all, I will love myself because when I do love myself, I will zealously inspect everything that enters my mind, my body, my soul. So I began to have self-love for myself. And it said, how will I greet those whom I meet? And only one way, silently and to myself, I will, I, will, I will look at them and I will say to myself, I love you. Those spoken in silence, those words will put a wrinkle on my brow, a smile on my face. And again, who can say no to my goods when their heart feels my love? So as you can see, I read this so many times that I have these scrolls almost memorized, right? Um, and and it, began, it began to change my character. The second word, one was, I will persist until I succeed. I will persist until I succeed. Think about the picador, the bull that keeps coming. And every time that they miss, they get they have a sting. But, but despite that sting, they keep trying over and over and over and over and over again, right? Another one that, that really occurred to me was a scroll that said, I will act now. I will act now. Tomorrow's not promised. I only have now, right? I will not wait. When it's time to take action, I will act now. So those characteristics began to simmer with me. Another one was, I am nature's greatest miracle. No one can smile like me, talk like me, walk like me, eat like me, sleep like me. I am nature's greatest miracle. No one can laugh like me. Do you understand that? I am unique. Do you understand that you are unique? Do you understand that there are people who will not be able to do things exactly the way that they do? They can copy you, but they can't be you. They can steal your stuff, but they can't be you. They can steal your, they can even hurt your body, but they can't steal your spirit. Nobody, nobody can hurt you without your permission. It, it really taught me how to change my mindset. And I began to do affirmations. I began to tell myself that I'm a million dollar a month producer. I'm a million dollar a month producer. I would write that to myself. I would sing that to myself. I would literally, I recorded this song and I would listen to it while I was driving. Every single day, I would read it out loud. I would speak it silently to myself. I would continue to do all of these things, you all. And my mindset grew stronger. I began to read books like Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People, all of these different things. The Instant Millionaire, which was one of my favorites. And I began to set long-term six-year goals. Now, this was the battle, you all. A lot of us are attempting to beat an a, a enemy of lack with knowledge. Understand that knowledge is not what helps you to defeat the enemy of lack and not enough. What defeats, you, what defeats that is feeding your spirit. Your spirit was here before you were, and this, your spirit is going to be here after you are. A lot of you are trying to strive without realizing that you've already arrived. All you have to do is claim what is already your abundance, what is already your birthright. All you have to do is say yes to what's already there. But too many of us are too busy criticizing other people because you're thinking that people that have money is evil and you're lying to yourself, telling yourself that 
that money is the root of all evil. When the Bible doesn't say that, it said the love of money is the root of all evil. Um, I had somebody who I saw in a, at an event and somebody says, what does money mean to you? And then somebody wrote on a board, evil. She was broke, of course. Like, if you if you were telling something that you were repelling it, saying, I don't want it, it's okay. I want y'all to understand, it is okay to want to be rich. I want y'all to write that in the comments. It is okay to be rich. It is not some kind of spiritual um, deficit when you have money. A lot of us are listening to, um, you know, false people read scriptures saying things like, well, it's easier to get to heaven. It's, a, it's easier for, um, it's harder for a rich man to get to heaven than it is for a camel to go through the needle of a, uh, I mean, the hole of a needle. That's what you're telling yourself. Do you realize that the same thing that the devil tried to do to God was try to misquote the scriptures to get them to, to get him to basically disavow what his purpose was. You have a purpose. You were meant to be abundant, not broke, busted, and disgusted. So believe those things. So anyway, I began to do those things. And what I did, you all, I remember when I went to, um, my belief system was high. I did read this book called 10X by Grant Cardone too. That was a great book. I highly recommend it. Whether you like Grant Cardone or not, that book was one of the books that changed my life. So that really had my belief system going. So I went to this person that I was a part of this organization uh, with, and I told them that, well, my goal is to do 20 million in assets that year. Looked at me like I was crazy. In fact, my goal was 8 million, but I guarantee you when I read the book 10X, it grew to 20 million. When I told my person that, they said, you're crazy. They said, nobody has ever done in this organization more than 21 million. And I got people who've been in this organization for 20 years. And this is your first year and you think you can do 20. <laughs> they said, I want you to be more realistic. Maybe 10 million, maybe 12 million can be a stretch goal, but 20 million, you're not gonna hit 20 million. I said, okay, all right. And guess what, y'all? I hit 26 million that year, 26 million. I was a number two person in the organization. The same people who was cheering me on when I was getting to three and five began to not like me when I got to 15 and 20 because some, some people will like you until you pass them up. And you gotta be okay with that. You're going to have some haters, right? on your journey towards seven figures. Not everybody is rooting for you. I hate to tell you that. Some people are only rooting for you when you can help them out, when you're a blessing to them, but they're not rooting for you when you're doing the things yourself. That's number one lesson. Number two lesson, I did it because I stuck with one thing. I stuck with one thing, all right? So too many people, write this down, y'all. Too many of y'all are saying, well, I gotta get multiple streams of income. I got to do this, Airbnb. I got to do Turo. I got to buy this real estate. I got to invest in these funds. I got to invest in this mutual fund. I got to do this. I got to have this side business, but I also got to do this side business. The jack of all trades never wins. Understand that. When a man is chasing two rabbits, he, re he rarely catches any. You have to pick one thing and you have to stick to it until you're successful. A lot of these people who are talking about these multiple streams of income, they have multiple streams of income, but they only have multiple streams of income because they already made their first million doing one thing. Okay? One thing. So my one thing was I was going to teach people how to protect their money. That's it. <laughs> Anything that I'm going to do, multiple streams is going to be related to that one thing. That's it. So I began to develop a seminar and train on that seminar and study that seminar. And, and, I, and I took someone else's seminar and I made it my own. And I did this, you all. And let me tell y'all this. There are a lot of you who have a presentation that you have that's a great presentation that you only, you only do it once every two months, once every three months. And you think that that's going to help you to be a millionaire. You really want to know what it takes to be successful? I did that same seminar 80 times in a year. That means I was doing that same presentation, sometimes two times a week, 
sometimes even three times a week, right? I was filling up the room. I was spending marketing money. I got really good at spending marketing money to fill that room, and I did it. And let me tell y'all, some of y'all give up before you have an opportunity to succeed. But I believe that if you stick with something long enough and you become the master at it, then you're going to be great. A great philosopher said that if you want to be an expert at anything, you got to spend 10,000 hours doing it. Some of y'all don't want to do three hours and you say it didn't work. Some of y'all will join a mentorship and a mentorship, you don't get results in three weeks and you say, this didn't work. I want my money back. You see what I'm saying? You, you're not sticking with it. I'm talking, who am I talking to in this room today? I know I'm talking to somebody, right? So that seminar, the first time I did that seminar, you all, I had to, I tried to get loans because I knew it cost about $8,000 to put on this seminar. I didn't have $8,000. I did not have $8,000. I went out and I tried to get loans because I had to hire somebody. Nobody would give me a loan. Not one person would give me a loan. I tried about 20 different banks. I could not get a loan because I had no, I had no proof of concept. I had no money. They weren't going to trust somebody who was just talking about what they think is going to happen. So what I did was instead of me getting discouraged and said nobody wants to give me any, any money, um, what I had to do was I said, well, I got to work, make work, what works for me work. I, I contacted my family members. I contacted people who I knew. I told them to refer me to 10 people a piece. I called all the people who they referred me to. And I filled up one good seminar and I gave my presentation at that seminar. I didn't have to pay for mailers. I paid for some cheap food. The food was only $20 a piece. Uh, I had about 40 people in that particular room. I spent about maybe $400 on a whole seminar, the whole event. And that seminar you all afforded me to make about $30,000. That was the first time that I realized that, wow, this is powerful. So I used that money and I reinvested that entire 30,000 30, on my first three to four seminars. Cause understand that you had to, cause these seminars was coming like bi-weekly, two times a week. So I couldn't just invest in one. I had to do four to five in advance. Now imagine doing, doing, Doing all of these, I spent my entire 30000 It had to work or it had to work. If I didn't make my money back doing these particular seminars, I was going to go out of business. I had to take a risk on myself and bet on myself. Somebody say bet on yourself in the chat. Bet on yourself. The first seminar, I remember this. I was super excited. I was nervous. But this is the first seminar. I knew I was going to come and crush it. And you know how you feel like you hitting it. That first one, I was on fire. I was probably too much on fire. I was probably over energetic. I was getting up there. I knew my lines. I was like, it's easy. I was like, look, sometimes you can win by simply not losing. Zero is your hero. I had all of the lines, all of the lines, you all. But guess what? I had about 35 people in that room. Guess how many appointments I set? Zero. No appointments. Zero. Now imagine this, I already paid for about three seminars and, and each one was two sets. So I had six seminars and I had to pay for the dinner. And the first one, I knew that if I didn't make something happen, I was broke. I already went to my family. I didn't have anything else. I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. I was afraid. But that next seminar that I did, you all, kid you not, the same area, the second half of the seminar, I didn't feel like I did anything different I set 14 appointments. I went from zero to 14. That was my first, last time ever doing zero. I never, ever got a zero again. But on that 14 appointments, you all, I made about 40 grand on those 14 appointments. So I just kept repeating it, rinsing it and repeating it. And I did it over and over and over. And then I did client events when I got enough clients and had those clients bring friends. And it was cheaper than the mailers. And then I got them to say yes. And then I did, um, and then I did, you know, um more expensive restaurants where I would now go to Ruth's Chris. And then I had wealthier people that who would come to those events because they were nicer restaurants. And I would crush it. And that that year I went from making less than a hundred thousand dollars to making one point eight million dollars. The first two people that I hired. Uh, for my team, I remember it was a it was a person who was an operation. I mean, I'm sorry, I called it a money chaser. 
And the second person, it was a, a, um, a seminar coordinator. No, I'm sorry, not seminar coordinator. It's called an appointment setter. It was a money chaser and an appointment setter. The appointment setter's job was to set appointments at the seminar. We literally, she literally made sure she organized the seminars to make sure everything was good. She came into it. We had something that was called response sheets. We gave everybody a response sheet. This was key so that they can write notes on the response sheet. And I would do a call to all, call to action at the end. And I would say, if you found value in this, I said, do me a favor and check yes on your response sheet. When you check yes on your response sheet, my appointment setter is gonna come around and set your appointments. I want you to schedule within 10 days. Don't schedule if you're not serious. Only schedule if you're, if you're more serious than curious. Uh, don't leave me waiting in the doctor's office the way that you, the way that many of you counsel last minute. Don't do me like that. I'm a real business and I want to give you real value. And we would set appointments, you all, on the spot. So we would go back and I would call those appointments the next day and just say, hey, thank you for attending the presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, we got some great value. I'm going to show you how to protect your money from market declines. I'm going to show you how to, and that was really insurance and annuities, you all. That's all that it was, insurance and annuities. I wasn't even doing assets under management at that time. I didn't even have full service financial advisors. I had one product. So remember, doing one thing, having one product, being focused on, the, on, on one marketing strategy will get you to where you need to be. You can do that with two employees. You can do that, you all. Everybody can follow that same path, no matter what industry, no matter what organization that you're in. You need a signature talk. You need to tell your story. I became really good at telling my story. It's the same story that I told you all at the beginning. It's that same story about my grandmother, on how my grandmother lost everything. I got that emotional connection with the crowd. I got them to know me, like me, trust me. And they set meetings with me. And guess what? I didn't go see them. They came to see me because I wanted to be looked at as a professional. By the way, it's 111 people in a room, which is one of my favorite numbers. So type 111 in a room because that is that means we are in alignment. We are in divine guidance right now. You, some of you are being inspired. You are hearing exactly what you need to hear. Um, I'm gonna let James Berger in so it can be 112, but remember it was 111, all right? So, so here's the deal. That's how I made my money. Now. To go a little bit deeper, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I had to have marketing operations. I had to have a team. <laughs> now, I made a lot of mistakes. I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of turnover in the very beginning of my career because I didn't understand how to be a leader. I didn't understand how to set a culture. I had to understand how to set a culture. Now, what, when I set a culture, I had to realize the type of people who I wanted on my team. And I realized not everybody can be on my team. So there was four critical things that people needed to have before I hired them on my team. They had to have these four H's, which is what I called it. They had to be humble. They had to be hungry. They had to be honest. And they had to be happy. And everybody I have on my team, when I interviewed them, I evaluated them through that prism. Are they honest? Which means if I say, hey, what is your biggest weakness? They don't say, well, sometimes I could just be so perfect that I spend so much time trying to get things right. And I could spend so much time getting everything right that I don't make mistakes. You ain't honest. You ain't hired. Right? I want somebody who's going to say, I made a mistake. I lost the company money. I fixed it because I did this. Hungry. Are they proactive? Are they people who wait on me to tell them something? Or do they... Or do they go out and, and do what they need to do? Do they read on themselves? Do they study themselves? Do they want achievements in life? Do they want to excel in life? Or are they content just staying where they were? <clears throat> um, hungry, happy, honest, humble. Are they humble? Can I teach them something or do they feel like they know it all? Do they ask for help? Is their ego so big that they don't feel like they need anything? Do they feel like they're smarter than everybody else? Do they feel like they're better than everybody else? I don't want any brilliant jerks on my team. So if they're a brilliant jerk, I'm getting rid of them. I don't want them on a team. I don't care how smart they are and happy. Are they negative Nellies? Are they always negative? Do you Are they people who you don't really ever want to be around? 
Those are not the people I want on my team. So I wanted to evaluate the people who were already on my team. And I asked myself, if I had to hire this person again, would I do it? If the answer was no, they were no longer on my team. Did I have the right people in the right seats? And when I interviewed them, I did specific interview questions catered toward that. Now, some of you all don't have a team, but let me tell you, even when you, everybody in here should at least have one person on their team, even if it's a virtual professional, that you can pay as little as $4 or $5 an hour to get a virtual professional, right? Everybody should have a member on their team, even if you don't think you have anything to assign now. You can have a personal assistant. Why? Because you have to practice being a leader. Okay? Now, I have a team of all together between all of my companies, about 20 people, right? But it wasn't always the case. Right. I had to learn a lot of things on, on along the way. And let me tell you, when I made my first, let me tell you this. Be happy now. Don't wait for you to get this multiple six figures or seven figures to feel good. Feel good now. Why is that important? Because when I made my first seven figures, you would think I would be celebrating and happy. No, I was actually depressed. First time I made my seven figures, I remember I was the number two person at that time in the organization. And everybody was giving me my accolades. I was walking across the stage. People were saying, oh my God, your first year, you did 26 million. The number one person did 28 million and had been there for like 20 years. Like, this is amazing. Like, how did you do it? Blah, 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 blah. But I felt depressed. Why? Because all I did was sold products. I had no continuity. I woke up thinking I had to do this again. I got here by doing 80 seminars. But if I keep doing 80 seminars every year, I'm not, I'm, I'm not spending any time with my kids. I don't have any, any life. I'm stuck in St. Louis. I can't travel. I can't go out of town. Like, like if I'm not working eight, nine, 10 appointments every day, then it won't get done. There's nobody else who can pick up my slack. What if I get sick? Then my business stops. Like, what if I went out of town for an extended um, period of time? Then my business stops. I have nothing giving me residual income. If I don't do the work, it can't come. I went and asked my leadership. I said, what should I do? And you know what they told me? They said, well, you did 80 seminars last year. If you want to increase your business, do 85 seminars this year. I said, I don't think you understand what I just said. I looked at the number one person in the organization at the time. This person was walking around the stage with an oxygen tube. Some of the people was looking like they were on crack. They were looking like they were old. 40-year-old people looked like they were 60. And I had to ask myself, is this where I want to be 10 years from now? And the question was no. So I had to make a decision to step out of that. Again, this is write this down, y'all. Sometimes you have to give up the good in order to get the great. Let me tell y'all the most um, hardest thing for most people is when they have a goal. Let's say that goal is to make six figures and you make $100,000. And now you got the golden handcuffs because you can't see yourself walking away from that $100,000 job. But it's that $100,000 job that's keeping you stuck, that's actually keeping you from a million dollar net worth because you feel that you feel that you would be walking away from too much if you walk away from that, seven, that six figures. The six figures is what's actually keeping you broke. It's an oxymoron, right? The six figures is what's keeping you broke because you feel that you're not good enough to give up the good in order to get to the great. Am I telling you to go out and quit your job? No, but I am telling you, I want you to dream bigger, think bigger, know that you are, you are capable of much more. You don't have to. In fact, I will tell you this. It is easier to make a lot of money in a little bit of time than it is to make a little money in a lot of time. It was easier for me to make seven figures than it was for me to make six figures. Why? Because I had to think differently. Look, I want y'all to do me a favor. If you own today, turn on your cameras. I want y'all to do this exercise with me. I want you all to close your eyes. Coach Kim in the building. What's up, Coach Kim? Um, I want you all to close your eyes, and I want you to envision for 15 seconds your ideal life. What is going to, in three years from now, what is it going to feel like? How much money are you going to have in a bank? What is it going to taste like? What is the food going to taste like? What is it going to smell like? Where are you traveling to? How much time are you taking off? I want you to envision it starting now, 15 seconds. 
Okay. Now I want you to think of the exact dollar amount that you will have three years from now. How much, what, what's your, what is your income? What is your um, gross revenue? What are you bringing in three years from now? Write that, I mean, not write it down. I want you to envision it in your mind. Close your eyes and envision that number. Now keep your eyes closed and do me a favor. I want you to take that number that's in your head and I want you to 10X that number and envision that number being 10X, what you just thought. In your mind, I want you to think of what are you going to have to do differently to get the 10X number than the one that you originally thought of. What are you going to have to do differently? Think about it. Let your subconscious work for you. How many team members are you going to have to have? What type of systems will you need? How would you need to run your business differently? How would you have to market your business differently? What type of people are the people that you have on your team now, the people who can get you to this 10X number? Are you the type of person that you need to be right now to be able to handle this 10X number? All right, open your eyes. Now, how many of you just simply envisioning this 10X number, were able to think of some different ideas than you had before. Write in the chat, if anybody was able to think of anything differently than they initially thought of, write it in the chat. Sharice, Sharice is in the building, Sharice. Um, let me unmute, let me unmute you, Sharice, Sharice Richards. And I just wanna get, what are some, what are some things that you thought of that were different? Um, so, um, what I really thought about was, um, the, the building a team and not just building a team, but what I saw was five different teams mm. in five different states. Ooh. <laughs> so states like, duplicated. well, oh, that's a good, <laughs> I know I saw Arizona. Mm. I saw New Jersey. And that was it. I didn't go past those two states, but I did see five different organizations mm -hmm. in five different states. So and you're gonna I, leave you're gonna leave one company but five different divisions. There you go. Okay. <laughs> if anybody can do it, you can do it. You already have the experience. So what she what she realizes that she's gonna have to duplicate herself several times in several different places in several different states. And I'm going to say one of those places might be international. Turks and Caicos was swirling in my head. So. Look, we don't we don't have to live. The great great thing about being your own boss and doing and doing some things, I made the most money that I ever made when I was spent 10 days in Dubai. I didn't have to be in the States in order to make money. I was able to lead my team from Dubai. When it was 7 in the morning, I mean, when it was um 8 a.m., I was on that call doing my meeting at 7 p.m. when it was 8 a.m. their time, leading that team to having a great day and setting records. See, the thing is, is now with technology, you don't have to travel all the time. I'm just getting on Zoom meetings and meeting with people all around the world. See, it's all about, here's what it's all about, you all. If you can learn how to set an operating system and set daily meeting rhythms, then your team will get used to those daily meeting rhythms. We do daily, write this down. I'm giving, I'm dropping out. Some of y'all are going to catch these gems. I'm giving y'all small gems throughout. Some of y'all are not connect, connecting the dots because you're thinking, well, why aren't you telling me step-by-step step what to do? If you pay attention to this, I'm actually telling you what to do, but you got to catch it within the story. So we do daily meetings every single day, and I show up to the daily meetings every day. The daily meetings with my team are only 15 minutes. It's a 15-minute Zoom meeting that I do with my leadership team. And then what I do with my leadership team, we cascade, we separate, and we do um, 15 minutes with our own individual teams. The leadership 15-minute is to get leadership information every day, and it's to cascade the information to everybody's individual team. They lead their own team. I teach them how to lead their team in a leadership meeting. They go on to the 15-minute the call once I once they go on their own call, 
and they lead, marketing leads 13, sales leads 13, operations lead 13, and they get us ready to go for the day. That's every single day. And then once a week, we have a 90-minute leadership team meeting where we discuss issues, we solve problems, we, we, we think big, we come up with big opportunities, and that's and I show up for that. Other than that, that's all I show up for. I'm not doing my own appointments. I've trained my team to do my own appointments. Outside of that, my marketing team has their own meeting. Outside of that, my operations team has their own meeting. And we meet everybody. All of the teams get together on Mondays for 45 minutes. It's actually 30 minutes. And they just give an update about their, apartment, their um, departments. That's all I do. That's how I run the company. And um, Charmaine, who's on my team, she gets on the ACA calls and she does a 15 minute with ACA and she reports that to the leadership team. You have to set communication rhythm. Some of y'all have teams, but you only talk to them when you need something or you only talk to them when there's a problem. You're not proactively setting meeting rhythms. You're not proactively reviewing those individuals. You're not proactively talking about performance with those individuals. So people want consistent feedback. That's how you scale. That's how you grow an organization. Thank you, Sharice. You're welcome. So again, I'm dropping gems throughout on how you scale, how you leverage your company. So we talked about um, operations. You got to know about marketing too. You have to get on this digital age, you all. Like, how do I how do I bring up this? How do I get this up to 118 people weekly on these webinars? And I'm not even using Facebook ads yet. It's social media and it's knowing how to use it, right? It's not how many followers you have, it's how you engage those followers. That's something that you really need to get good at, right? So one of the things that I do, I'm gonna tell you how I fill up these webinars. All you have to do is fill up your own webinars. You don't have to go buy steak dinners the way that I did. You can do regular webinars. First, I got a virtual professional. Her only job is to go into people's inboxes and say, hey, um, I saw that you were interested in the webinar. Let me tell you about the webinar. Write in the comments if anybody got a message from me telling them about this seminar. In the comments, put a one if anybody got a message in, the, in their inbox telling them about this webinar. I got a secret, you all. That wasn't me. I'm sorry. I know that y'all got happy because you thought that I was having individual conversations with you all. But I hate to tell y'all, I love y'all. Now, I did respond to some of the people who I saw respond back, but that initial comment, it wasn't me. It was my. It was a virtual assistant who I gave a script to go into the inbox to invite people, personally invite people individually to this webinar. And you just happened to come on because some of you got a personal invitation. The second thing, how I filled up this room, I use a tool called ManyChat. M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T, mini chat, I don't know, mini chat, mini chat, I don't know. But all I do know is, and some of y'all saw that I was, you know, I spoke at different organizations and may have invited you, that's true. Now, M-A-N-Y chat. So if you ever seen me <clears throat> on a reel or on a post or on a live, I would say something like, hey, comment the word, um, growth if you'd like to attend this webinar. And when you typed in the word growth, automation sent a message to your DM and told you about this webinar. So instead of me going to all of these individuals, if I had 30 people type in the word growth, that's all I needed. If 30 people typed in the word growth, 30 people got a message to their inbox telling them about this webinar. You clicked on it, you registered to the free webinar. Now I have 118 people in the room spending absolutely no money to do so. How else How else did I do it? Consistent posting on social media. Like really, that's it. And I spoke in other people's groups. And when I spoke in their group, some of them followed me on social media. And sometimes I told people about the webinar. You can feel so many. Now, some of you are saying, well, I don't have a big following. You can do this without having a big following. You can do shout out pages, which we haven't even did the shout out pages. Once we start doing the shout out pages, the numbers are gonna get even bigger. But what we did was we did, um, you can actually go to other groups who have the same interests of the clients that would be your ideal client and have your virtual assistant message individual people in those groups and personally invite them to your webinar. And you already know they might be the ideal fit and the ideal client because they came to your webinar. 
I'm giving y'all so much value today. This has been my best webinar so far. And I haven't even gotten, I haven't even gotten to the financials yet, which is what I'm known for. But if y'all are getting some value today, put some fireballs in the comments. I'm telling y'all, I'll be giving all kind of game and all kind of value. Sometimes people sleep on me and that's okay. If they, one of my friends told me before, look, if they sleep on you, tuck them in. That's all right. Go ahead and sleep on me if you want to, but I've helped more people to get six and seven figures than most people who I know in this space, but yet I'm low key. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. Prove yourself to yourself. You know who you are. You know what you can do. You know what you can accomplish. So that's marketing, right? The other thing that you, the other thing that I'm going to talk to you about is, um, oh, actually, I want to give some of y'all some, some. When, I'm, I'm going to present a challenge, a five day challenge to y'all. But people who sign up, I want to give y'all my actual um, financial worksheets, and I actually want to give you my um, my interview processes when I'm hiring somebody. And I want to give you all my system on exactly how I hired somebody, exactly how I build my team. I'm just going to give you all that as a bonus. OK, and um, among some other stuff, I might even give you all a free. But I don't know. I'm going to give you all a lot of stuff. I'm just going to give away just a ton of value. All right. So here. So here's the deal. We got to talk about finances, right? It is very important that once you start making this money, that you have a place to put it. The first thing that you have to do is you have to find the money. Too many of y'all are wasting money. You don't understand the profit and loss statement and you, you are signed up for a bunch of subscriptions that you no longer use. You are paying people that you no longer have need for. You are, um, you're going out and you're wasting money on crazy frivolous stuff when you need to be putting the back some of the stuff back into your business. I've, I've, I have a mentorship, you all, and almost everybody I've had make up for that mentor what mentorship, what they pay off of this one thing alone. I help them to go through their books and find things that they're wasting unknowingly and unnecessarily. And a lot of people was able to find the money to pay for the mentorship. They were wasting money. The second thing I was able to do was help people find money by doing things. Some people was overfunding their 401ks, which I got a whole problem with funding a 401k past the match. Overfunded IRAs. They were paying extra payments toward their house. They were refinancing their house to 15 years instead of 30 years. They were doing things that wealthy people just don't do. They were funding their 529 plans. They were doing all of these things that they shouldn't be doing. And once I was able to rearrange those things, they found money. The next thing you want to do is you want to fund into an IUL or a whole life policy. And I'm going to teach about, I'm going to teach all about the setup on how I do my whole life policies. I'm going to show you statements. I'm going to show you how I took a loan against my policy. I'm going to do all of that. I don't have time to teach about that all today, but I will teach about it when we, um, when you all sign up for my five-day challenge. I'm going to teach you exactly how I do those things. I'm going to teach you how you can borrow from your money tax-free as your money continues to grow, as if you never touched it. Because when you fund these particular policies, I'm going to tell you one strategy that I use. I get excited about this stuff. So you know how most people say, pay yourself first? You ever heard that before? Well, pay yourself first to most people means um, pay yourself um, pay yourself in your 401k 5 to 10%, and then the rest of the 90% can go towards your, um, your bills. Well, I flipped that, right? So what I say is no. Before you pay even taxes, if you're an entrepreneur, before you pay the bills, funnel that money through a whole life or index universal life, life insurance policy first, specially funded. Now you have, you get paid a hundred thousand. Now you got 70, 80,000 that can go toward that life insurance policy. And once it goes there, you funnel it through, it continues to grow as if you never touched it. Then you actually borrow against that money to pay all of your bills. Now, instead of you having only $10,000 earning interest, you got $80,000 earning interest for you. Over the span of 10 years, instead of you having $80,000, you got $800,000 continuing to grow uninterrupted as if you never touched it, although you paid for and bought the exact same things. I'm going to teach that strategy in a challenge. I'm going to also teach you how you could actually pay off your debt and get out of debt 
10 times as fast as you're doing right now through the power of life insurance. I'm also going to show you how to make your money work for you four times off the same dollar through life insurance. So I'm going to show you how I funded my life insurance policy. I bought real estate by turning my credit card into cash. I paid for real estate at a down payment with that. Then I used my life insurance policy to borrow against it. It kept growing as if I never touched it. I paid off my credit card and now I got all of the points from the credit card and I got the real estate asset. Now I made money three times off the same dollar. And then once the asset grow, grew, I borrowed a home equity line of credit and borrowed a down payment against that property, bought me another property. Now I made my money work for me four times off the same dollar. And then I went out and I got me a trust to own nothing to control everything. And I protected that and I protected some of my money from taxation. So essentially, because I saved money, I essentially made money. So I essentially made my money work five times off the same dollar, where most people don't even make money one time off the same dollar. See, once you learn these strategies, you can borrow against it to expand your business. Had I known about this when I was 21, I would have funded my policy when I made that first $60,000, and then I would have borrowed against it to go out and fund all of the, um, the seminars and the workshops that I did. I didn't do that then, but I'm doing that now. I just funded a $500,000 policy, and now I'm going to borrow against that to pay for my taxes. You see, once it funnels it through that system, it grows as if you never touched it. So I'm going to give you all a real quick test. So if I have $100,000, and that $100,000 is um, earning 5%. Let's say I got $100,000 in cash and it's earning 5%. One year later, how much money do I have total? Put it in the comments. I got $100,000 that's earning me 5%. One year later, how much do I have? Write that down. All right. Y'all are smart. I said total. Yes. Okay, good. I just wanted to test you. You all are right. 105000 Okay. Now let's flip the script. Some of y'all about to get mind transformed. This is going to be worth the price of admission, which was free. All right. So now I have $100,000 in cash value life insurance and my cash value is earning 5%. This time, though, I borrowed $30,000 against my policy to go get an asset. One year later, how much do I have in my cash value policy? Write it in the chat. Got $100,000 earning me 5%. This time I borrowed $30,000. One year later, how much do I have on my cash value policy? Write it in the chat. All right, I'm seeing a bunch of different numbers. I love it, keep guessing. All right, a lot of y'all are afraid to guess. I got about 10 people to guess. It's 118 people in the room, okay? Don't be afraid to get wrong. Be afraid of not participating. I'm telling you, people that participate typically win. I know when a person is going to win right away because they participate. All right, let me tell y'all the answer. The answer is $105,000 still. Listen, you all, most of y'all got it right. Some of y'all didn't, but that's okay. Listen, I had $100,000 earning me 5%. I borrowed $30,000. I borrowed against the policy. I didn't take it from the policy. Remember, the money continues to grow as if I never touched it. So if the money grows as if I never touched it, I got $105,000 if I borrow against it, and I have $105,000 even if I don't borrow against it. So if, I, if I'm making the same amount of money if I borrow against it or not, should I borrow against it or should I not borrow against it? What do y'all think? Some of y'all are mind blown. Put some mind blown emoji. Should I borrow against it or should I not borrow against it? Too many people think that they set up their policy the right way, but they're not even using it the right way because they never use it. It's use it or lose it. If you don't borrow against it, it takes away from the power of the policy. We want you to borrow against it because you use it or lose it, right? Now, when I borrow against it, here's a, here's a great, great thing about that. Should I buy a liability or should I buy an asset? If I'm borrowing against it, should I buy a liability or should I buy an asset? Yes, you should buy an asset because I'm using my money that's growing as if I never touched it to buy an asset, which is actually making me money as well. All I have to do is pay the interest on the loan. And if I'm making, if I got 4% interest I'm paying on the loan and I'm making 8% on the other side, I'm making money off of money that I never touched. That is the key to the victory, you all. And I'm making this money and I'm growing it tax free and it's continuing to snowball as if I never touched it. So the next thing, you all, that you have to understand that I don't even have to pay it back, it's unstructured. 
which means that there's no credit check for me to borrow the money. They're not looking at my credit score. They're not making me fill out a loan application. If I don't pay it back, guess what? My policy still continues to grow as if I never touched it, and it's simply subtracted from my death benefit plus interest when I pass away. My death benefit is always much more than the cash value. So when you know those things, you can win. So the, the last thing that I want to talk to you about, before I get into this last part, y'all, I got to teach y'all how to own nothing and control everything. I got to get take 10 to 15 minutes teaching y'all about a trust, teaching you about how to protect your assets. We're going to teach you in detail during the five-day challenge. But what I want y'all to do is I want to drop the links for the five-day challenge right now. We're going to give you $100 off VIP. You can pay $197 for VIP for, to spend five days with me via Zoom. If you do VIP, you actually get time with me to do Q&A in the room for me to answer all of your questions. And if you do um, general, you don't get to be in the Zoom room with me. But we do go, um, somebody said it's an error, 404 page. That means it's error or no? All right, is it working? Let me see. Yeah, it's 404. It's not working. So we need to have the correct link, you all. We need the correct link. So we're going to be getting you the correct link. There's always disruption before intention. So while we are waiting to get this link right, you all, oh, I think hopefully this is it. Okay, we got the right link. So drop that link a couple more times. Sign up for this challenge. Why? We're actually going to shout you out and I'm gonna give away a couple of special bonuses for people who take action today. You're gonna get my exact step-by-step -step blueprint on how I hire people my step-by-step -step system, my financial management system, you're going to get a spreadsheet where you're going to be able to manage your finances, your personal and your business finance, where you can begin to generate a profit and find money that you're wasting unknowingly and unnecessarily. Um, you're going to get all of those extra bonuses today. And for VIP, you're going to get all of the recordings. Um, all of, We're going to take advantage and give you all of that today. But what I want to do is I want to bring up a special guest, Christina Yvette, and she's going to spend some time talking to you about how we use life insurance and the trust and how we can own nothing and control everything. So, Christina, let me make sure I unmute you and make you a co-host. There you go. Um, I'm going to make you a co-host as okay. well. And how are you doing, Christina? I'm good. Thank you, Marvin, for inviting me to be here to talk about trust. I'm super excited to be here. How is everybody? All right. All right. So some uh, in the comments for Christina, because I'm telling y'all, y'all are about to get some amazing information. So those of you who stayed around to the end, you are in for a special treat and a bonus. And we just like to over deliver. So Christina, the floor is yours. All right. Perfect. So briefly, I just want to talk to you guys about trust and how important it is for you to create your own estate. Right. So a lot of us, we are so intentional about our finances. We are so intentional about building generational wealth, but we never ask ourselves the wealth that we're building. Right. We got the million dollars in the bank. We got the house. We got the car. We have everything. Right. But how are these assets going to be transferred to our children? And we never ask ourselves that question. So ask yourself this question right now. The house that you live in, the house that your children live in, if you was not to wake up tomorrow and that house is in your personal name, how is your children or your spouse or your, your next of kin going to be able to take control over that property? And so the answer is that you are going to drag them through court. You are going to drag them through probate. And you don't want to do that because they are in an emotional state right now where they just suffered a loss, which is you, you, the head of the household, you, the breadwinner. And so now you have to actually drag them to court to where now they're going to be fighting your creditors in order for them to be able to get a hold of dad's house or mom's house. You don't want to do that. You're going to be doing your children and your spouse a disservice if you allow that to happen. So you need to get your affairs in order because guess what? If you don't get your affairs in order, the state is going to do it for you. And the way that they set up estates is not fair. 
because they're going to pay your student loans off first. They're going to pay your credit cards off first. They're going to make sure that your car note is paid off first before your children even get a dime of your money, before that house is ever transferred into their name. You don't want to do that. So a lot of people think that a will is good enough, but a will is not good enough, right? A will will end up in probate. And what you want to do is you want to create your own estate by way of a trust so that you can protect your assets. You want to protect your assets from these creditors. You want to protect your assets from lawsuits. You want to protect your assets from divorce. A lot of people don't know that divorce is a transfer of wealth, you guys. The wife is going to take half of your pension. She's going to take half of the um houses. So you don't want that to happen. You want to protect yourself. Do not wait until you get sued in order to protect your assets. The way that you're going to do that is by having everything in a trust. Marvin just said it. Own nothing but control everything. He said that for a reason. That's what you want to do. You want to set yourself up for stewardship, not ownership. I know that it's fly and it's sexy and it's cool for you to be the owner of that house, but that's not the goal. I'm telling you, if you are intentional about building generational wealth, the goal is not for you to own the house. The goal is for you to control the house because you have to remember that that house is going to outlive you. If you do not wake up tomorrow, if the good luck calls you back, right? That means that that house is still gonna be there. That house is still gonna be there. And now someone else is going to control it, right? So you want to be able to control your assets, but not own your assets. You want all of your assets to be owned by the trust because when it comes to transferring your assets or transferring your wealth, right? You're building the generational wealth. Think about the transfer. Think about the end goal. Think about your heirs. Think about the, you know, the third and fourth and fifth generation, right? Think about the Rockefeller family. Think about these famous families, right? You have some of them who didn't do things the right way. They didn't have trust in place. And so the wealth was gone by the second and third generation. And then you have some families that they actually deal everything in trust. And so it was actually protected and preserved. And that's what you want. You want to protect your wealth and you want to preserve it. And you want to do that by using a trust. What type of trust, right? There's hundreds of different types of trust. You have to choose the right one for you. But Every single trust is going to end up in, in these two categories, okay? It's either going to be a revocable trust or an irrevocable trust. I'm going to break it down for you really quick. So a revocable trust is where the grantor, which is the person who created the trust, the person who established the trust for their heirs, for their beneficiaries, for someone else. They didn't establish the trust for themselves, right? So the grantor has revocability where they can put an asset into the trust and then they can take it back. They can terminate the trust if they wanted to. They can make changes to the trust if they wanted to. They can remove their trustee. They can remove their beneficiaries. So that is what a revocable trust is. Because it can be changed by the person who created the trust, it's not seen as a fully protected trust because creditors can come after it. Like I told you, your student loan debt, default on it and guess who's coming after it? Uncle Sam. So you don't want that to happen. So with a revocable trust, if it were to end in litigation where somebody sued your trust, what could happen is because it can be changed by the person who created it, the judge can decide to pierce through that trust, which means that they're going to force you to produce it in court, which means that every single page, let's just say it's 100 pages, is now going to be a part of the public records. Everyone is going to be able to see every single page of your trust, the net worth of your trust, the beneficiaries of your trust, what's inside of it, all these things. You don't want that to happen. On the contrary, you have an irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust is where the grantor has irrevocability. So that means that the person who established it 
cannot take back property or assets that they put into the trust. They cannot terminate the trust if they wanted to. They cannot remove the trustees or beneficiaries if they wanted to. They cannot make changes to the actual trust. Because the grantor can't do that, they have no power, no control, and no benefit. It's seen as a fully protected trust, which we call a bulletproof trust. And if it was to end up in litigation, one, the creditors cannot come after it, which is good. That's what you want. That's why you are protecting your assets. You don't want to be subject to foreclosures or bankruptcies or lawsuits, right? Or even probate. So it's fully protected. Another thing is that if it was to end up in court, the judge will not pierce through that, through that trust because it's an irrevocable trust. And so it's not going to end up in the public records and your trust is going to remain private, which is what you want. Instead of you being out here and using your personal name and your social security and all these things for all this stuff, you could start now using the trust entity, just like how you use your LLCs. But the number one reason why you want to set up a trust is because it's going to protect your assets. And two, it's because of privacy. And you can build wealth with it. You can build wealth to the point that you're preserving it. So one thing that I um, always tell people is that your first asset inside of your trust, because you want to set up your estate to where it's sustaining itself. You don't want to be pouring in your W-2 income into the trust. You want to make sure that the trust acquires its own assets. Marvin's been talking about assets. The number one asset that you should put inside of your trust or that your trust should establish is an index universal life insurance policy. You got to do it like the Rockefellers. You have to do it like these, you know, these families, right? The blueprint is already there for you. You just have to implement it. And so the trust is actually going to be the owner of your insurance policy, the payer of your insurance policy, and the beneficiary of your insurance policy. The trust is going to take out a policy on every single person associated with the trust. You are the trustee. So you are going to be insured. The beneficiaries are what we call human capital. They're human resources to the trust. The trust is a living entity, but it cannot operate itself, right? The trust is seen as a living, breathing person. It can do anything that you can do. So if you could buy a house, it could buy a house. If you could build credit, the trust could build credit. So because you are the trustee, which is the person who's operating the trust on a day-to-day -day basis, you want to make sure that you are insured. Because if anything were to happen to you, guess what? The trust just suffered a loss, a major loss. And the trust needs to be compensated. So that death benefit is going to go to the trust fund account and it's going to be replenished and and actually um, aid in uh, preservation. Because a lot of us, we're so focused on building the wealth, we never even put anything in place to preserve the wealth. How are you going to preserve the wealth? The way that you preserve the wealth is through insurance. You have to insure everybody, even the future generations, right? Your grandchildren's children, they're not even born yet. But guess what? As soon as they're born, the trust is going to take out an insurance policy on them and pay into that policy. And then that makes them a trust fund baby. We need to normalize trust fund babies in our community. So now that trust fund baby is going to grow up. And instead of them going out and buying a house and getting a mortgage or buying a car and taking out a car note, what they can do is they can go to the trust and get that loan from the trust. And so the trustee is going to issue them a check for that house or that car. And if that trust, if that beneficiary decides to default on that loan, guess what? It becomes a risk-free loan because the trustee took it from their insurance policy. And because it's risk-free, that loan doesn't need to be paid back. Marvin just told us that. It does not need to be paid back because they borrow against your cash value, which is amazing. 
And that's the position that you need to put yourself in. That is you actually building generational wealth. Not just because you got cash in the bank. That's not generational wealth. It's actually you setting up your estate and you listing your family, your children as the beneficiaries of that estate. That's true generational wealth. So you actually have to do it the right way. You can't be walking around here saying it and not actually walking the walk and talking the talk and doing the thing. So that's exactly what you want to do. I recommend that you guys set up an irrevocable trust. You need to set up the bulletproof trust because that's what's going to preserve your wealth and protect your assets and maintain your privacy, okay? And the reason why um, when it comes to irrevocable trust, there's a lot of like, you know, confusion, right? A lot of people, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to lock myself out of the trust. The only thing that you have to do is you have to appoint someone else to be the grantor, okay? So you're going to have someone else be the creator on paper, and you're going to appoint yourself to be the trustee because the trustee has all the power, all the control. They're called the fiduciaries, and they operate the trust for the beneficiaries. So that's the position that you want because you want to be able to control your assets. So that's why you want, you might as well get the best type of trust. Instead of going for revocable, go for irrevocable. So. This has been amazing. And like, understanding you all, we can go for hours upon hours of teaching on these topics, but we only have time to give you a sample today, but we will be breaking down the step-by-step -step blueprint on setting up your trust the right way, setting up your whole life or IUL the right way, uh, making sure that we show you how to bring the two worlds together so you can set a bulletproof foundation for future generations, how you can make, protect your money, manage your money, multiply your money. This information First off, you got to understand that this information is not just freely given out online, right? Why? Because first off, you have to be the expert in your topic. Christina has put in thousands of hours on this topic of trust. I have put in thousands and thousands of tens of thousands of hours on this topic of financial literacy and index universal life. We both have accolades in the field. So I'm not a social media influencer. Christina is not a social media influencer. We are professionals who, who help thousands and thousands of people to do this. And we are looking to help you to do this. And I know it's even hard for Christina because she's like, I cannot give you all enough information in these 15 minutes. But we, but we got to stop. We got to stop. However, I know many of you want more. So what I'm going to do don't miss this information, you all. This is life-changing information. This five-day challenge from January the 8th through the 12th is literally going to change your life from the comfort of your home via Zoom. So just to show you some things that we're going to talk about. Um, all right. So I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to drop you off really quick to make the screen bigger, Christina. So I'm going to be showing you in just five days, you're going to learn how to not just scale your business, but within those five days, we're teaching you scaling your sales and marketing, building your teams and systems, breaking down, becoming your own bank through life insurance. I'm going to break it down in detail on what you need to look for, how you need to protect your assets, how to properly structure it. Also, day four, asset protecting using your trust. Christina is actually going to delve into the world of trust structures and asset protection, gaining insights into safeguarding your assets through strategic trust planning, ensuring that your hard-earned wealth is secure. And I'm also going to talk about additional ways of earning income, how to focus on earning passive income so that you're not depressed once you make your first million like I was. You're going to explore diverse income streams, but I want to show you how to make your main income stream first, and then we're going to teach you how to diversify at the end. All of these things in five days that are going to get taught to you. So if you feel capped, if you believe you're worth much more, 
If you're concerned about your hard-earned money that is not being maximized the way it should, if any of those things resonate with you, you all, you are not alone. The gurus of the business world have left many owners feeling stuck in a cycle that doesn't promote true freedom. Everyone on the internet teaches all you need to do is create a brand or just market more and you'll grow. I wish it was that easy. There are many ins and outs when it comes to growing a business and scaling financially where you can step away and it's still and that it's still able to grow on autopilot. So if you're sick and tired of not having your finances in order, if you're sick and tired of not having your business to work and scale in just five days, I, I want to help you discard all of the old ways you thought about building your wealth, hiring, all the old ways you thought about sales or insurance, all the old ways you thought about 401ks. And I want to empower you with the secrets of the 1%. So go onto the web page, go ahead and put the link below and you're all are gonna get another chance, one last chance to join this five day challenge, you all. This is like generational breaking, all right? This is generational curse breaking for you. Um, some of you all are not gonna take action on this, which is fine. But a lot of you will. And those who will take action, let me ask you all this. This is a real life true story. Let me stop sharing my screen here. This is a real true story. The information that you got today, how many can people can say that this free information that you got today was worth $97? Just to have the information that you got. If you feel that this was worth $97, put a 97 in the chat. If you feel that this information that you got for free during this hour and a half was worth $97. We just talked about gems on a life insurance, gems on a trust that many people didn't know about. I told you my story on how I made my first million. I gave y'all some gems on marketing strategies, some gems on operation, some gems on building my culture and how I built my team. I gave you all some real life transparency on times when I struggled and what I had to do to get out of it for night for free. I'm sorry, not $97 for free. And many of you are saying this is worth more than $97. So if you know this was worth more than $97, imagine what the paid information is going to be like for only $97. Do you all think that I'm going to under deliver or over deliver on a value for $97 or uh, I think $197 if you do VIP right now. Absolutely, I'm going to over deliver. So why don't you have your ticket? Like literally, what are you waiting on if you don't have your ticket? Look, I'm gonna tell y'all, I made I made 10, um, eight figures last year and I don't say that to brag. I say that to let you know that I don't need the $97. I promise you I don't. But one of the things that I do understand is that when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. When you're not willing to invest in yourself, why would I be willing to invest more into you? Like a lot of times when I go to certain mentorships, I attract a lot of my leaders. And the reason why I do is because they know that I was willing to pay for mentorship myself. And it's like a, it's like a, a symbol of respect saying that you, I respect you because you were not afraid to bet and invest in yourself, right? And it's the same thing for you all. So who am I about to celebrate? If you're still working on it, if you're working on it today, go ahead and put some fireballs in the chat so that we know that you're working on it. Congratulations to Kimberly Harvey for getting her VIP pass. So we're still getting some people who are getting their VIP pass. LaShawn Payne, I know you already got your ticket. Shout out to you. Um, let's see. So before we increase the prices, I'm going to give you all a couple more minutes. And I can understand for some of you, if $97 is a lot of money for you. But I bet not see y'all going out and buying no, and buying no, what do you call that, the type of weed that's like human hair? We for no thousand dollars. Let not see that when you ain't willing to invest ninety-seven dollars into this. Y'all bet not get the premium nails done, and y'all bet not get the new Xbox. 
Yeah, I bet not get the new Xbox if y'all can't pay $97 to invest in your financial future and passive income. And y'all bet not get that new 60, 70 inch TV. I'm telling y'all that. Stop watching TV and watching other people live, live their dreams when you're not living your own dream. I'm talking to somebody today. And y'all bet not order the order the filet mignon either. When you go out to the restaurant, y'all better be eating at the, the minimum if you ain't willing to pay for yourself. What else? What else? What else y'all be doing? Definitely, I better not see y'all in first class if you ain't invested ninety-seven dollars in yourself. Unless you feel like you already know the answers and you got it all figured out, then that's 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 cool. Then, congratulations to Pedro for grabbing his ticket. If you learn one thing, one gem, you all that you can take away, one gem. What is one gym going to be work, worth to you? If you're able to figure out how to reduce your expenses to buy another $500 per month, was that worth $197? If you were just, if you were only able to learn how to hire your next employee that's going to take your business to the next level, would that be worth your $97? The access to the information with VIP is forever. So even if you can't be on the call, you still want to take advantage of this. You will get access to the recording. Although showing up is going to be more powerful because when you show up, uh, we're going to be able to guide you. Oh, one last thing, you all. And I should have said this earlier. Some of y'all just want to set up your insurance policies. If you just want to set up your insurance policy, I'm going to give y'all a website to go to and I will I will help you set up your insurance policy complimentary. I'm going to drop this in the chat. All you got to do is click on this next link and you can schedule a time to meet with my team complimentary to help you set up your life insurance policy the right way. You get the bonus, you're going to get the bonus before the challenge starts. So this link is for people to click on. If, you, if you're looking to set up your complimentary call to set up your life insurance policy, um, even if you couldn't get into the challenge, this is complimentary, y'all, uh, to, to set up your policy. I should see at least 30 to 40. 30 to 40 of you setting a time to meet with us. Complimentary. Shout out to, is it Steven or Seven? Just joined with the VIP. How many of y'all clicked on the link to set up your life insurance policy for us to help you do it the right way, structure it the right way, complimentary? Imagine you having that boost before you. Uh, this is a $495 value that I'm giving you all complimentary to meet with my team and essentially ask any questions that you have and set up your policy. Um, shout out to is it Angelia Collins for getting her VIP? Shout out to Cynthia Reese for getting her VIP. Shout out to Evan Hightower for giving his, getting his VIP. Shout out to Tanisha Springs. Shout out to Antonio Santos for getting his VIP. And Kimberly Hart on um, Harvey. Shout out to you for getting your VIP as well. Y'all are going crazy getting your tickets right now. I had to call, had a, my call today. Shout out to, to Tamika for getting her policy set up with my team today. Love it. All right, so y'all, so you either got one or two things or both. Doesn't have to be either or it can be a both end. Some of y'all have got your um who, who have set up your um to join our five-day challenge to get filled with enough information to be immersed in the information to leave out financially transformed. You will not be the people who make excuses to say, 
oh, uh, I wish somebody would have told me about this or, oh, I want to be a generational curse breaker. But when you get the opportunity of the lifetime, you pass up the opportunity of the lifetime during the lifetime of the opportunity. The people who act fast, who, who say, who say, you know, I will act now. Those are the people who are going to make it in this world. But even if you couldn't do that, you all, you all got the opportunity, the opportunity to at least get yourself set up for your life insurance policy. Shout out to Shedrick Garland for getting the VIP. Shout out to Brenda for getting into the five day challenge. Shout out to y'all, y'all are crushing it. Y'all are crushing it. We're going to take, take five more spots, people who are ready, before I shut it down. Who else is joining the five-day challenge? Shout out to all of these people taking action today who are saying that I am ready to change my life. I am ready for my financial fortunes to change. Shout out to the people who have scheduled their wealth creation call as well. The wealth creation call to schedule their life insurance appointment. Shout out to y'all. Y'all are making it happen. I want you all to look back and say, because of the decisions that I made, because of the decisions that my great-great-grandmother made, because of the decisions that my great-great-grandfather made, which is what you and your great-great-grandkids are going to say, our life has changed forever. We have built a legacy for generations to come. Shout out to Vail Francis for getting her VIP. Shout out to Myra Perez. I see you. Don't give up, Myra. Myra. Shout out to y'all for making it happen. We got three more spots, y'all. Or are you going to be one of the ones who take advantage of this? All right. Okay, Myra, I see I see you made it happen. So shout out to Myra Perez for making it happen. Still got three more spots. I counted Myra twice. So we got three more spots. So who is ready? Will you be one of the ones? In my mind, <clears throat> if you haven't left this call yet, that means it's something that's probably urging you to go ahead and join the challenge. But for whatever reason, something is holding you back from a $97 or $197 investment to move forward. I don't know what it is, but there are 70 people within a room and there is about 20 people that have taken advantage of this so far. That means that there is at least 50, 40 to 50 people in a room that are, for whatever reason, still on the fence. I'm rooting for y'all. I'm rooting for y'all to go ahead and take action. I, I'm in. No way I can pass this life-changing milestone up. So grateful to have found you and Christina. We're de definitely grateful to have found you as well. I get it, y'all. If you can't do it, you can't do it. I understand times are tough, um, but... I want, I want to help you to grow through any economy. I want to help you to grow even when it doesn't seem like things around you are growing. I want to help you to grow uh, when it seems that, that you've always been stuck in the circumstances that you couldn't find your way out. And I want to help you to grow if you're that six-figure or seven-figure person that's attempting to get to the next level as well. So there's something that's going to be something for all of you in the room. But anyway... I'm putting a 60 second clock and then I'm getting out, y'all. 60 seconds to get your ticket and then I'm stepping away. Shout out to Kerwin Walker. Shout out to Kerwin Walker for getting his VIP pass. So we got a couple more spots left, about 45 seconds to take advantage of it, y'all. But shout out to Kerwin Walker. I see you, Kerwin. Kerwin said he's in and his own now. And he said, we got Shaq in the room. What up, Shaq? D Shaq. 
All right, we have 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 25. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. All right, we got we got we got Adrian Wright who just made it in in the nick of time. Adrian Wright just made it in in the nick of time. Congratulations. Tamika said, hold on, I had to pull over. I'll wait on you for a little bit. Tamika said she had to pull over. Adrian said, we driving and we had to pull over. I appreciate that. Congratulations to everyone who joined the challenge, you all. This challenge is going to be amazing. Uh, I'm going to put my heart and soul. We're going to have some special guests, including Christina, uh, who is going to be a part of this. Uh, let's see. Somebody had a question. I don't know how to do this, but I'm about to get out of here. Let me see. Participant. Ellie, is there somebody? I just saw a hand raised, but no, I'm trying to get out of here, but I'll, I'll answer those couple questions. There we go. Okay. I don't know how this works, yeah. Forget it. Um, all right, y'all, I'm leaving, but before I do, shout out to, give a couple more shout outs. Shout out to Tamika Bernard, who just got herself in just in the nick of time. We waited on you as you were pulling over. I do understand if you were driving, so shout out to Tamika Bernard. And also shout out to Shaquille Carroll, who also got in and used that extra time to get herself in. So shout out to Tamika, shout out to Shaquille, shout out to Adrian. Uh it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a definitely a great time. We got about 25 of you who took action today. Um and you can still get in, y'all. The $97 not changing for the general. So you can still get in later. Um the $197 will probably be going up to $297 for the VIP. Uh, so that will be changing. So if you can't do it right now, that's completely understandable. And also, if you go to wealthcreationcall.com, wealthcreationcall.com, um, then you can schedule your insurance meeting. With that being said, uh, let me take us out. This has been an amazing experience, been an amazing time. You all have been amazing people. I see a lot of people. I believe in you, whether you were able to take action or not. I believe in you. I know that you're going to do great things. I know that you're going to accomplish great things. I know that you are greatness. You are greatness on display. And that greatness will not be um, ignored, you all. You are going to make it to the top. You are wealth creators. You are powerful. You are the people who God has chosen to take, to take this to the next level. We got to reteach. We got to re-educate. We got to retrain our society. And you are part of the mission. If you're still here, that means that you have a desire to make a change. And if you have a desire to make a change, I have a desire for you to make that change. You are powerful. I want you to remember that. Uh, you are powerful. Before we leave, I want you all to put into the chat, I am powerful because you are powerful. Um, you're more powerful than you know. You're more powerful than you can even imagine, than you could have ever imagined. You're powerful. 
You were made in the image of God. So when you being made in the image of God, I want you to understand that that means that you are all knowing. You are omnipresent. Um, <clears throat> you have all of the qualities that are God in the image within you. That means you are in abundance. That means you can speak those things that are not as though they are. That means you are the head and not the tail. You are a lender and not a borrower. You are above and not beneath. You are a fortress. You are a comforter. You are all of these things in your own right. And I want you to recognize who you are Recognize the power that you have. No matter what you do, I want you to put your all behind it because it is your ministry to the world. And I believe in you. So that's very important. So on the count of three, we all going to say dominate. One, two, three. Dominate. 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 Dominate.